they're asking me about street punk and the actual real story to street punk is the truth record, the business truth record. The case where you could not get any, we, there was no record, there was no shows or anything like that. So I rebranded the oi thing into street punk and that's where it goes. And I was looking at different names, whether it's new oi and I thought, no, it's still got the word oi in it, da da da. And then there's like reality punk and I thought, no, that's kind of don't mean. Then, then I see street punk and I thought, that's the one. What is street punk? It's an attitude. It's not just about like music, it's just everything. Street levels, every day, it's working man's music, isn't it? Yeah, just have a laugh, have a good time. The energy. It can be political. It's working class street music. To me, it's, it's the pure essence of pop. about the energy like wanting to kick off like <laughs> we're all down to earth yeah. there's no there's no uh, prima donna bollock underground always underground always do it yourself what i remember is nme had punk yeah. sounds these are the these are the music papers of the time yeah nme had punk sounds wanted something oi and so they promoted copy rejects and they had the business on the front page and, um, and so they were driving a new working class movement. Because when it, when it started over here, it, it was, um, there, there were fucking thousands of skinheads, basically, um, with the two-tone movement happening and then the oil thing coming along. It was, it was a, it was always like fashionable to be a skinhead. How many of them stayed true through the years? I don't know, but. Um... Oh yeah, it's changed a lot. I mean, uh, especially in London. I mean, London in the eighties wasn't very nice. It was, it was, a, it wasn't as nice as it is now. It was a bit, you know, there was a lot of political things going on, and, and, and then you had the, the riots in the eighty one and all that, and it, it was. It was, it was, the gigs were great, but the backdrop was a very scary Britain, you know. Isn't it? People merged a bit better, punks yeah. and skinheads, yeah. whereas years ago they would fight each other yeah. all the time, you know. If there's like a skinhead gig, there'd be, be punks against skins or skinheads against punks. And it's now more, everyone's more together now, you know, which is a bit, a bit more unique now, you know. Yeah. Well, when you're younger, you don't think about that. So when you're older, you think, bloody hell, you know, it's a couple of times. I mean, I mean, what, well, I mean you know, gigs got petrol bombed and things, bad things happen, you know. But you don't think about it when you're younger. When you're older, you think, oh, that was, you know, that was a silly thing to do, going to that gig, but, you know. Yeah, it was more violent, I think, yeah, a lot more. Yeah, it's not, so, it's not as violent, nowhere near as violent now. Because uh, uh, I think people realise now that you can get your, 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 your anger and your violence out on the dance floor. You haven't got to punch up. You can just have a dance around and get it out that way. You know? But before there was a... And also there was a, 
there was an element of skinheads that was anti-punk, so they would look for trouble with punks. You know, you had that. So, which I don't think you have so much now at all, really. The European groups have kind of taken street punk and made it into probably one of the biggest forms of punk there is in Europe. You know, and it made it right as well. You know, it represents a very good, vibrant scene. In Germany, we've got a lot of kids doing this, you know, and um, also in Germany, as I know, the kids who, skinhead, who are skinheads today, they are, uh, most of them I know, they are most, they are into, they are non-political, anti-racist, anti-fascist, you know, and there's no dealing with dodgy things. Most of the people I know and hang out from the younger generation, they make them, they make things clear, you know. They don't play around and... I think, at the moment it's all right, it's not too bad, because I think people realise now that there's quite a big difference between the skinhead and the bone, you know. I think people realise that. For a long time there was that, you always had that, you know. People always thought... People say, they all, people either think I'm a Nazi or I'm in a skull band. They, they don't realise I could be in anything else. Face prejudice so much as misconceptions. Yeah. That's that's a big part of this scene. People just presume if you look a certain way, you think a certain way. And this scene is way too diverse to ever be just pigeonholed as this one thing. You know, like JJ said, when we went to Colombia, it was like 1981 all over again. Just thousands of skinhead kids all over. Mm. They completely adopted that culture. It's all over the world. I mean, the last resort we played in like Indonesia, and I mean, I can't believe there's Indonesia. There's, there's, there's Jewish in it. There's, there's, there's like you name this, you name a country, they've probably got skin. Uh, well, not all every country, but a lot of countries. You think, hey? We live by certain rules, and we talk to each other, and we look after each other. We watch each other's backs, and what all I can say is that transfers into street punk. And those principles are basically projected now all over the world. Roy will back me up on this. He's oh, from London as well. Definitely. You know, he's, yeah, he's got. He grew up and knows what exactly what I'm talking about. But what the great thing for myself, seeing it go all over the world in Boston and even into Japan. You know, they identify with that working class ideal. And that's what I love about the fact that it's why it's so popular. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. I've even seen it in Indonesia when we played out there. The result, it was unbelievable response. Every kid was connected to it. You know, yeah. the feeling, the buzz. So yeah. I think it's because people can see similarities. That's what it is. You know? if, if you live in a, it doesn't matter where you live. If you're, if you're getting, if you feel you're not getting, if you're not worth. That's all your work. I think it, it speaks to them on a, on a level they understand. Yeah, they all come from yeah, they all struggle. poor backgrounds. And, but, yeah. They're the same as us. There's the 1% that own 99% of everything, and they're part of 1% that's got fuck all. But they, they try and work their way out of it in any way they can. And bands like us, and, and you know, everyone, the exploited, all the punk bands, all the employed bands, we offer a, a, like a way out from it in some way. Not even a way out, but just like a camaraderie of um, look, you may be at the bottom of the fucking shit pile, but it doesn't mean you're worthless. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And they recognise that, and, and uh, yeah, people, people connect with that. Our parents were factory workers, and we effectively took on their principles and applied them into our music. And that's what we do. You know, we we're very proud to be working class. And at this time, I feel in this world, we're basically made to feel bad if we're working class or you're thick. Or, yeah, 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 you, yeah, that's yeah. my opinion. Yeah. It, it seems like that. You, it's not a good thing to be working. And I'm proud. I will do yeah, yeah. everything I can in every form of music that I'd have to do with mm. to stick up for being proud of working class and where you're from. But so what if we haven't got fucking money? Who cares? Shit. Right? We got better things than money. Yeah. We got each other and we got Shit. principles. You can't beat that. You can't no money can beat that.
when it all started, I don't think anybody ever dreamed that it would become so global. Do you know what I mean? Um, You're talking like 1980. Yeah, yeah. Very late seventies, early eighties. You do a gig down the local boozer, and 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 you never expected it to go any further, really. And now, all these years later, we we, we go out to places like fucking Indonesia or Colombia, and there's kids into our music. You just really? never dreamt that that would happen. Yeah. Right? It's about seventy nine now, and we thought, oh, we got we got to get a band together. But we didn't know any, none of us knew anything about music, so we started take, taking bass lessons. And then eventually we got a guitarist and we got a drummer. And that was, but before that we, we had one go, um, we had a keyboard player and all sorts. We had two or three rehearsals, we just didn't get anywhere. But it was it was punk, it was it was punk and it was like, if them kids can do it, we can do it. Surely you can do it. So it was that. Unless you, unless you lived through the change, 1975, before punk, 76, 77, the, the changes that occurred, you, you can't imagine what a, a change it was when all, everything you heard on the radio was prescribed to you by the BBC and you had songs about love and dancing, end of, that was it. Songs about life, just didn't happen and you could wear you could wear straight jeans and stop the traffic because it was that weird flares were what people wore punk came along things changed overnight and it changed art it changed entertainment it changed music culture a lot yeah it, the, the change was huge but it lasted three years and here we are 40 years later playing punk rock I'm not sure punk rock was supposed to develop for 40 years. The Ramones didn't develop for 40 years or 30 years. They managed to produce 14 albums, but you always knew it was the Ramones when you put the record on. Um, but those first two years, those first two or three years of punk gave all the bands the template of how it works. But the difference is now is, I say, like the word punk, it is just like an umbrella term for lots of different mini subgenres or subcultures right. or sub subculture, if you will. Where it's quite, it is quite a vague term now. You've got the influence of pretty much the, the entire spectrum of, it's of, a of, of punk in there. It's a convergence of styles. It ain't just like three called bunch, bunch, buncher. There's, there's. You know, it's four o'clock. There's a lot of bum bum chat, bum bum chat, bum bum chat.
Uh, well, I would say it's sort of like a true street punk band would be someone like, say, Box Bar or bands like that, where they all sing along, everyone knows all the songs. That's a, that, that would be street punk. There's many faces to punk and there's a lot, there's many faces. And to be honest, especially me and Daz, we, we come from like, the UK 82, Discharge, GBH, all that. Fucking love that. I think it's got like that sing along chorus, nice and cymbal with nice lead guitar lines and a bit of like it's got the rawness and uh, like the energy. And I think to me that's like street punk, and I think that's what we I think we pull that off. of deciding you're going to do something yourself, getting up and making it happen yourself. That's what it is for me.
In terms of record industry, do we really need them? I don't know. These things are changing at the moment and they're uh, changing rapidly. And, Very much. Uh, for our scene, it's great because we don't need record labels. The shows that happen, we, I guess, make money from the t-shirts because the music's free now. So anyone that supports a group, I guess, if you want to support them, buy their t-shirt. Which is yeah. too hard to do, is it? Nah. For me, it's the attitude of DIY. I mean, other than that, I don't, I don't think punk rock meant anything really, apart from people who were just doing it for themselves. Um, and just the fact that you can get in with some mates and play music for the fuck of it, you know, just because you're gonna feel good with your friends. <laughs> Other than to like go mental life and you know go in a fucking punk shows is fun and it's exciting and it's one of my favourite things to do. So being able to participate in that on the other side of the stage as well is just like one thing that everyone's just keen to do. So So if I've got an idea and it's like if some people can do it, why I cannot do it? So do it by myself, you know, everything by yourself. And if you've got the passion to do it and you put your heart on it, it's always work.
about making the best of what you've got. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. I remember Gary Bushel, I read it somewhere, Gary Bushel had written it, uh, Oi is about turning a council house into a palace. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Not absolutely. let it get run down and leave your litter in the fucking yard, yeah, yeah. but to make it as good as you can make it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's your life. Yeah.